Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Always with Yunus Sharfavi. In Android, we do have two type of tests: normal instrumented tests, Android instrumented tests that runs on the device, and also local unit tests that run on your machine. And what we want to do is to share data and code between these two type of tests. We will see that in this video. Let's get started. So previously, the way to do that is that simply to create a folder. This is the article. This is Stack Overflow post to create a folder called shared test, right? And then you add that test into the test and the Android test. That was pretty simple. That was the way on how to do that. So as you can see, simply you are creating a folder and sharing it between the test and the instrument test. But this is no longer supported and it's not working anymore. So the other solution that's common in the community right now is that to create completely a new module and to depend on that module only in the test and the instrumented test without depending on the app. So here is the thing, here is the one, here is the proposed solution, right? Like it's no supported IntelliJ platform, but here's how we do that. We create an Android library called shared test and we depend on it in the app via this test implementation and Android test implementation, right? And then we can use this shared test code, which is the this library and we let it depend on the app. So that way we don't duplicate our dependencies. But let's get started implementing the solution. So here I'm having just a simple app and I do have some tests previously written for uh, testing flows. So one example of sharing data is to share this type of thing in memory person API, like this is a fake and this is also a fake. So sometimes you can use them in the instrumented test and in the local test. In the local test, here we are testing the view model, but we can also test the UI with this type of an available person API. That way you have to duplicate it also here in order to use it. Like you can, you can simply use it, right? We'd call it an available thing. It's not available here. Let's create this one. We go here to the file, go to the new and go to the new module. Here we we'll let it as an Android library and let's just call it shared test code, YouTube, something like that. For the bytecode level, okay, yeah, let's just keep it the same and do the finish, right? Gradle will take some time to build this one and let's go. Now we do have this thing, right? We do have this one, so we can move our code here. This is a separate Android library, okay? So it contains its own test and its own instrumented test, okay? So let's move this one here. Let's just do copy paste it here. So we will have some problematics. So first of all, we can use the flow. The person is coming from, as you can see, unresolved person. If you do add enter, it will show Android app and person. But we want our person. So this module doesn't know this module. What we need to do here, here in this step, which simply we do implementation, then we do the project, something like that. Yeah, and two columns. Ah, then we sync. And right now, we should have this dependencies here. So the person here, Alt Enter, it will be person from YouTube, which is this one. So that's pretty simple. Right now, we don't have this flow and the delay. So the delay here, okay, it comes from this one, person API from this one, and that would work fine. But now we want to use this in memory person API in our tests. So yeah, let me get back here. We want to use this one. Let's remove it from here because it is shared right now. And we want to use it here. If you do add enter, it won't know. As you can see, we can depend on shared test code, but we want to depend on it in the whole app. So I want to be calling this in memory person API in this part of the code. I want to call it here and here. So simply we go here and what you need to do is to do an implementation based on the tests, right? So we do have test implementation and we depend on the project, the same, but this one, which is shared test code. This is for the test implementation. We duplicate that for Android test implementation. Right now, if we sync the project, if I go here, I can see that I have this one here. I can do the import and it will work fine. Here, I can get this one again. I can get this in memory person API, which is this one that's coming from here. That's pretty it. That's how simple you can share code. But 
we are not just sharing like this object. The idea is that also sometimes we share test data. So you maybe create some factories for your person, right? Let's do that. Person data and make some object and you can have something like that. Get all persons or you can have like default value of person units, for example, that you use a lot in your test. So you can do person and yeah, please. That's it, and that way I can use this data consistently in my tests. I can use it here, person data and person units, and I can use it everywhere in my tests. So that keeps some consistency in the project. Sometimes we share a lot of code, like for example, live data. Sometimes you can use helpers like this, like data util, await value, for example, you can use them both in your Android test and in your local test. So that would make sense to use it here, not to duplicate it all of the places. So that's basically it. That's basically how you use it. This is the recommended way. Like if you go back here, okay, let me check. This is the response they got here from like asking Google team. So as you can see here in this thread, the final answer was to share source between test modules, you should be able to put the code in a separate project and consume it as dependency both with test implementation and Android test implementation. So this is kind of a good practice we are doing right now. So to summarize, we created a module that will contain our data and then we consume it only in the test implementation and the Android test implementation only here. We can't use it here, right? If you go here, you won't be able to do in memory thing. You won't. Why? Because here, what we did simply in the app, we only depend on it for the test and the Android test. And then in order to get the data, like to get the definition of the abstract class and the, the contracts we have and the domain modules we have, we did that here. We did the implementation of that. And the beauty of this solution is that if you need some dependencies that specific here, you can add it here. I don't think we do need that because the main like purpose for this API dependencies here is just for tests, but you are not writing any tests here. So basically you can remove that, remove that. You don't need them and also remove this thing. Also for this one, I don't think we need them, right? So let's just think here. What if we remove that? Let's think and see what happens. Here, if you go to the person API, you won't be able to use that, even though you are depending on this one. But here, let me just remove this implementation from for a minute. Let's check. If you go back here, you will see, okay, let me just do the flow, concurrent flow, yeah, exactly, it's not. So you need some dependencies whenever you want to use, for example, coroutine in our sub. Kind of we are duplicating dependencies. I know that we are duplicating this one, where it is this one, and this one here, just so just you can understand that dependencies are separate. Even though you are using the implementation of the project, doesn't mean you are going to use all its dependencies. Okay, so that way it's worked as you can see. So basically this is it for this video. The idea is just to create a separate module in which you define the required code that need to be shared between your instrument test and local test. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.